All right, here we go. So, all right, number one says find the absolute value of negative nine. So, remember, absolute value is just how far away z that number is from zero. So, it's just literally talking about distance away from zero. So, if we're talking about absolute value of negative nine, what would be the absolute value of negative nine? Nine. So, it's letter A. a. Okay, so number one, letter A. All right, number two. Okay, we have the absolute value of 11 plus 8. Now, I know we didn't spend much time on these, but when they are on the inside of the absolute value, you just go ahead and add them, then do the absolute value. So, we add these first. What's 11 plus 8? 19. Now you do what's the absolute value of 19? No. Remember, with absolute value, we, our answers will always be positive. It's not the opposite. It's how far away from zero it is. So it is 19, which is letter G. So remember, absolute value, your answer will always be positive, no matter what, because we're talking about how far away from zero it is. All right, number three, still dealing with absolute value. So we have absolute value of 10 plus the absolute value of negative 15. So now, since they're separated by the addition sign on the middle, they're not both on the inside, we have to do the absolute value first. So what is the absolute? All right, go to the bathroom. Okay, so what's the absolute value of 10? So what's the absolute value of 10, guys? Just 10. So then we do addition, and now we do the other absolute value, which is what's the absolute value of negative 15? 15. Now we add them. So what is this? What's 10 plus 25 or 10 plus 15? 25, which is letter D. Okay, you have you got to pay attention when it's talking about absolute value. We're not talking about opposites right now, we're talking about absolute value. Now, number four, oh, where's my eraser at? All right, so now, number four, now we're talking about opposites. It says, what's the opposite of 23? So what would be the opposite of 23? Negative 23, which is letter F. Okay, now opposites and absolute value are different. Opposites is talking about what is the opposite on the number line. So if you have a positive, the opposite would be a negative and vice versa. Now absolute value is talking about the distance. All right, number five. Okay, we had a number line there and they want you to choose the number, the set of numbers that are graphed. So we have, if you look at the number line, that the ones that are graphed, we have negative three, negative one, two, and seven. So the only one that matches that is what? Uh, Letter C. Letter C. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the Actually, is there any questions on the front? Okay, let's go on to the back. All right, number six says, which ordered pair represents the point on the coordinate plane? So we have our point right there. What is going to be the, uh, the X coordinate for that point? What's the X? Because remember, when you write an ordered pair, it's X, Y in parentheses. So we got to start with the X. And the X goes left to right. It's an X, X axis that goes horizontal. So which one is the X value? What is the X? Two. Okay, what would be the Y coordinate? Three. So that would be two, three, which is letter F. Okay, so when you're on a graph, you always look at the X first, then the Y. All right, number seven. Which of the following points is located in quadrant three? Now, this is not on a graph, but we've talked about quadrants. Remember, they go counterclockwise. So if you, had, if you have to, draw this out real quick, because I know that this is one, 
Then we have two. Then we have three down here. And then four. Now, they give us the point of all, or all these different points, and they want to choose one that would be in quadrant three. So you have to remember, okay, everything to the left, when we go to the left, is negative. And then we go down would be negative. So the only one it could be is letter C because they both have to be negative. It's got to be a negative X. It's got to be a negative Y. If you have to, draw this out. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, it just makes it a little bit easier. All right, letter or number eight. Okay, it says, which situation does the integer three best represent? Okay, so we have three feet below the ground, three yards below behind the winner. Or finding $3 in your pocket or losing $3. So which one would best represent using the positive three? Which one would we use it for? Oh. Okay, so if you lost $3, how would we represent that? Positive or negative? negative. So that's not going to work for this situation. Zach? Um, finding Letter H, because you found money, that means you're in the positive. You're up money. Everything else, you were below something or behind something. That means negative. All right, let's move on to number nine. Okay, number nine, ten, you were doing in inequalities. We talked about these. Remember, less than, greater than, or equal to. So number nine, we have five. We have negative three. And I told you when you have a positive and a negative, the positive will always be bigger. So we're going to make it as five is greater than, which is letter B. So five is greater than negative three. Okay, number 10, same thing. We have 11. We have seven. Now we have both positives, so we're just trying to pick the bigger number. So that'd be 11. So this is letter G. Close enough. All right. Where are we at? Number 11. Okay, 11 says which number is less than negative 8? So we have 0, we have 4, negative 7, negative 10. Okay, which number is less than negative 8? Negative 10, letter D. So out of those, negative 10 is less than. Remember, when you're talking about negatives, the further away from 0 you get, the bigger the negative is. All right, number 12. Okay, we're going to order negative 6, 2, 0, and negative 3 from least to greatest. So, which one would be our very least if we're going from least to greatest out of those numbers? Which one's the smallest one? Stevie? Uh, negative, six. negative 6. What would go next? Negative 3. Negative three. What would go next? Two. 0, and then two. 2. So, that would be letter D. No, letter H, sorry. I was looking at the wrong number. Letter H. Okay, least to greatest. Negatives would go first there because negatives are always going to be the smallest ones. Guys, it's not a big deal. Okay, number 13. Which quadrant contains the point named by negative 1, 3? So once again, Okay, if I draw this quadrants out, okay, we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, now, if we're talking about negative one, three, so if I'm at zero, and I, I know my x is negative one, I have to go to the left. Okay, three means I go up, so what quadrant are we in? Just say it. Quadrant two, so that would be letter B. 
Guys, I'm telling you, this will be a lifesaver on the test. Draw it out. Okay, and then act like you're actually graphing it. All right, 14. Raymond has $25 to spend and used $17 to buy a new DVD. Which integer best represents the situation of spending $17? So which one would we pick there? G, negative 17. Because he spent money, so it's negative. Okay, any questions on this? Guys, this is basically what's going to be on the test. Okay, integers, graphing, absolute value. Any qualities, that's it. Okay, I think it's 20 questions. It's nothing crazy. We'll take that on Thursday. So I would hang on to this, keep it, and help you study. That way you know what you need to. A lot of you seem to struggle with the absolute value. I would go back and double check that stuff so you remember before the test. Okay, you got a couple minutes. You can probably log back into Alex because tonight, or tomorrow night, you have to be at 60 topics. Some of you are nowhere close to that. So you got to get to work. We're not going to do another 15. Oh, yeah, we're not doing 15. 15 is not going to be on test. I don't know why I left it on there. 